time for updates. Updates on luxury beauty that I've been trying out over the last couple of weeks. There's been a lot. There's been a lot of releases, fall releases, even though I know it's August and it's hot. But this is when all the fall releases come, and before you know it, we're gonna have holiday right around the corner. In fact, we've seen some holiday already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through um, by brand, the different things that I've been trying. I'm gonna talk about what I think of them, where I think they fit in my sort of hierarchy of, of beauty products that I like, um, any flaws with any of them. To be honest, there's not, I don't have anything that's a complete like fail. I've been very lucky or I've only been picking up things that I've really liked, I've been a little bit more discerning about what I've been picking up or just, you know, the brands have been hitting it out of the park. I'm not sure which. Either way, we have a lot of good stuff to go through. So let's go way back like a month ago and talk about Guerlain. Guerlain Fall or uh, the Wild Nude, Nude Collection, whatever it was called. Um, and Undressed Brown and Wild Nudes were the eyeshadows and there was a bunch of velvet lipsticks that came out and a couple of satins. And I reviewed these relatively early and I have to tell you guys, I really love the Guerlain eyeshadows. I think they're excellent. My favorite one is the denim with the denim collection on the front. I hope they do something like that for holidays. But the Wild Nudes that came out, uh, this is the Endress Brown Quad, they didn't have any special packaging on the cover. Again, hope they do for holiday. Um, fingers crossed. But I will say the color story, now again, this is Undress Brown, is gorgeous. Definitely more of that warm, orangey, pumpkin spice latte kind of thing. If that's your thing, uh, I'll try to make sure that these videos are linked um, in this video to the, the reviews that I did, the full videos where I showed you all the products. Uh, if not, just go back and search through. <laughs> it's been about a month uh, for Go On Wild Nudes. Now, I think the formula is excellent. I really enjoy the product. Like I said, I wish they had had um, special packaging, but you know, you can't ask for everything. This is the Wild Nudes Quad. It's a little bit more neutral, more subtle. Again, both beautiful nudes, gorgeous, love them. The satin that I picked up, satin was number 15. This is a beautiful brown. There are satin and there are um, matte velvet shades, all gorgeous. There, again, take a look at that particular video to see what I thought about, like which ones I think would be worth picking up and which shades look like what. But I have to tell you, if you're looking for a neutral collection um, and browns, you know, whether warm or cool or whatever are your thing, that is the collection that I would suggest picking up for just neutrals, for like browns, warm browns, pumpkin, those types of shades. That's the one that I would say is the one to get. Um, I love that one more than the next neutral collection I'm gonna talk about. And the next neutral collection I'm gonna talk about is the uh, Chantecai. Now, Chantecai collection is the Wild Mustang collection. There are these little singles in here and there are two lip veils. I did have a video that went up very recently that showed all of this in detail so you can take a look. But basically, singles look like this. This is a matte shadow and the luminescent shades look, let me pull this one out, like this. Just like their um, luminescent singles have looked in the past. No different, just, you know, different packaging. And of course, this is Wild Mustang. My thoughts on that collection. I think they're good. I think the mattes are really nice. And I think the luminescents are very beautiful. If you're looking for a one and done shade, Pinto is the one I suggest. And that's the one that's not brown. It's like a silvery mauve color, not something I would have guessed from the marketing of the collection. And I think the lip veils that go with that, the Wild Begonia and the Laurel aren't brown. They are pinkish or peachish or like purplish. Uh, so yeah, I don't think they're actually neutrals. Now the, the three shades in the luminescent and matte shades, yes, those are brown. The Pinto shade is the one that's the mauve. The rest are, are browny shades. So yes, I think the rest of them are, are neutrals. But if you're looking for a real neutral collection, you're looking for browns and tans and all those types of things, um, and you want good lip shades to go with them, the Guerlain Fall Collection is an absolute excellent, I think they hit it out of the park. Again, they could have done the packaging to go with it, but you know, um, there are the cases that go with it. This case did not go with, this is an older case that I just happened to put the 15 satin shade in, but they have like the brown leather. You could pick those up. Again, I'll reference, hopefully I can remember to link the, my my brain, as I might've mentioned in one of my videos, I'm having some issues with some migraines. So have a difficulty some days. Um, today is better than others, but uh, hopefully I'll remember to link it. You know, that collection, that Guerlain collection is really, really good. 
And the Shanta Kai collection is good, but I don't think it's really a standout. And I, if I had to choose, like, for, for the lips especially, I'd pick the Guerlain. Um, and when it comes to the shades for the eyes, you know, the Guerlain shades in those uh, quads are beautiful, a much more reasonable price point, and you get four shades. Whereas the Shanta Kai, it's like $56 per shade. So, and you only get, you know, one shade. So, just saying. Um, D&G powder. This is the Dolce & Gabbana Solar Power. This is a really excellent powder. I've talked about this a million times at this point. Um, I'm going to put a little on while we're talking. And I just have to tell you guys, it's an unusual powder. It's, it's kind of weird when you um, put your brush into it or sponge into it or whatever you put into it. It doesn't really look like there's anything going on your brush. Like it looks like nothing came out. But as you can just see, as like you can see my face, I can see my face in the reflection, it automatically like mattifies, but also not really like mattifies, it almost just glows. It's amazing, it's amazing. I bought a backup to it. As far as I can tell right now, it's only available at Harrods. Uh, I have heard that Dolce is coming out with a whole new line of makeup, um, they're reinventing. So we'll see what happens there, but I gotta tell you, just super impressed with it. Love it as a product, love it by itself, love it over everything, love it. Uh, the uh, Chanel Rosy Beige. Now this was the La Beige's collection that came out. There was like a light and a medium, I think. Um, and basically this was um, cream bronzer and then the Rosy Beige shade come out, came out overseas. And I used this sort of as a base, as a primer. And I still like it as that. And I think it, it's, it creates a really nice, it's very subtle, um, skin-like. Uh, you know, foundation, uh, for foundation, so like a primer. Um, but here's the thing, I still don't know whether it's gonna be in the US, I was told it was coming to the US, and now I can't seem to find any verification of that. And uh, I have talked to my Chanel SA, she doesn't know, trying to find out uh, where I got it overseas is sold out, and it sold out pretty quickly. So I will continue on that quest to see if I can get it for you guys here in the US, but it is a good product. I do really like it. Is it something you need? I don't think so. I, I think there's other products on the market, frankly, that create a, you know, a smooth texture to your skin and work as a primer. I like this one, but I just, I don't think it's worth, you know, spending three times the amount on a secondary market like eBay or Mercari for it. That's just my take. So just putting that out there. Uh, Laura Geller. Laura Geller was kind enough to send me foundation and blush. And when I did my review, the foundation they sent was fair and it was too deep and too yellow. Uh, and the blush was broken, unfortunately. But since then I did buy the foundation in porcelain and I bought a bunch of blushes just with my own money and love the, the porcelain shade. The porcelain shade works really well for me. I've worn it in a couple of videos. I think it's a great product if you're somebody who's looking for a creamy powder foundation and you have drier skin especially. It works wonders, um, really looks beautiful on the skin. If you have lines and wrinkles and stuff, I wouldn't worry about it. It's really easy to use because it's a powder, you just put it on. And the blushes are beautiful. Um, this one here is uh, Down to Earth, which I think is a gorgeous shade. Really easy to use blushes. Um, you know, very comfortable on the face. I think really good for more mature skin. Uh, they come in numerous shades and I really, I can't say enough about how much I think about the blushes. I think they create a beautiful sheen to the face. Uh, really excellent product. And if you're looking for the foundation and you're, you know, a deeper tone than I am, deeper skin tone, um, I, I have to tell you like the fair is actually, in the video that I did, when the one they sent me, that's fair and it's actually pretty, pretty much like, it's like two to three shades darker than my skin tone. So fair isn't really fair and it's definitely warm. Um, so I do think it's tricky to find your shade match, but the, the formula when you actually get the right shade is really excellent. Uh, Yves Saint Laurent, guys, guys, um, I'm gonna show you just the one today because I have uh, seven of them. This is Store Dolls. It is my favorite of all of them. This is shade 100. They are coming to uh, Nordstrom here in the U.S. They will be at other retailers hopefully soon. They were at Bloomingdale's for a while, then they were gone. They are on the East Saint Laurent site, at least as, as I record this. They are all excellent. The formula is amazing. It can go from, you know, simple day look to dramatic night. Some of them are sparkly. There's blue color story and a uh, silverly silvery black gold uh, color story that um, can be very dramatic. Those are both limited edition. Uh, uh, you know, I 
I really love these and I have nothing negative to say except for the fact that I have heard in some cases people are getting quads that aren't like glued down correctly. If that happens to you, absolutely contact the retailer. That is not acceptable um, in, for anything that you buy, but especially a luxury brand like the Saint Laurent, it should, it should work. Um, in my opinion though, they are exemplary products. Absolutely love them and um, you know, I really, I, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised at how much, because I, I knew I was going to pick them up and I liked the fact that they had like the cushion, the chevron cushion, like that's on the YSL, the St. Laurent bags, and I, I like the fact, I've, I've always liked the couture clutches that they've done, the big ones, uh, but just, just really overly, like I, I'm thrilled with them. Uh, price point I think is pretty good for $68, and yeah, I love the fact that there's a bunch of different color stories, just, I mean... To me, they hit it out of the park. Uh, if they could just fix that little glue problem, uh, which again, this is you know something definitely to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, I, I have no reservations. That fantastic, fantastic launch by Saint Laurent. Uh, Makeup by Mario. So this is the uh, Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil, and I have to tell you, I've actually used this quite a lot. This is the lightest shade. This is barely blushing. This is a really good product if you're somebody who is looking for a veil of blush. Somebody who doesn't want a lot on their face, um, they want to just sort of, you know, have that little, like, veil, I mean, that's the name, veil of color, um, to, like, pop out their cheeks or to, to sculpt a little bit. It's a really beautiful product. The only thing is, it does fade. It, it's not a long-lasting product. It's not something that has, you know, a tremendous amount of, um, uh, of lasting power. Um, I like it because I like a very subtle blush and my skin is dry so the, the cream nature of it is fantastic. The Sheer Buffer Brush from Sonia G, I'm telling you go buy that brush. It's an, a fantastic brush. If you ever use creams, it's worth it. Uh, and I used it with that and I just it just it just makes a gorgeous look and uh, I have I have bought two different shades of that blush because I like it so much but again it's not long lasting that would be the the drawback so that that's more in my you know good but not great category uh, Dior so I have not picked up the Dior fall collection the sweater collection I put something up on Instagram uh, recently and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys actually want me to pick it up which is funny uh, because I was getting mixed messages and it seemed like nobody did want me to pick it up but now I on Instagram looks like you do so uh, if that comes out that that's the way it lays you know I will uh, I will I will grab that collection and, and review it for you but I did pick up the ball mask and I did pick up two of the the blushes and the ball mask is very similar to uh, store dolls and if I had to pick between the Bell Mask and Store Dolls, I'll show you Bell Mask. I'd pick Store Dolls, just to be honest with you. Bell Mask is a really pretty color story, very similar to Soft Cashmere, very pretty uh, formula. It works really well, similar to Store Dolls. But Store Dolls, I like more. I think there's more you can do with it. I think there's a, more of like a wet look that you can achieve if you decide you want to. And the Dior doesn't really have that. The blush that I got, uh, one of the blushes, was a Lady Dior, which was a holographic blush. I think this is a really nice blush. And again, refer back to that video for swatches and details and everything. But this is actually a really pretty uh, interesting blush. Uh, a little similar to something like, uh, you know, a Charnel. But, you know, it actually has a nice shift to it. I think it actually looks very pretty on the skin. It wasn't too distracting. It wasn't something that drew attention to... To fine lines and wrinkles. I like the shade and I definitely think for people who are looking for a deeper blush, that's one to consider. And that definitely has long lasting power. Like that lasts all day. Uh, Rare Beauty. So the eyebrow pencil I have been wearing. This is the one in, I think it's Auburn. I have it in front of me. I'm pretty sure it's Auburn. If I am wrong, I'll put it down below, but I have been using it. I think it works extremely well. It is more the color of my hair. It's a beautiful product. It's waxy, but not too waxy. It gives like a really fine line. Excellent, excellent product, um, and I would certainly suggest it. And then the all of the above weightless eyeshadow sticks, I picked up the rest of them. This is an amazing product. If you are looking for an eyeshadow stick that you can put on your eye and you can wear all day through the rain, through the storms that have been hitting the United States, especially the East Coast, it seems like lately, where you're out in a you know down like you're in the middle of a you know hailstorm in the middle of the afternoon, those will not go anywhere. How do I know that? Because it happened to me. <laughs> I was downtown on Newbury Street and I got poured on, poured on. My mascara ran, uh, my, my foundation looked, uh, that was not good. My hair was a disaster, but my Rare Beauty eyeshadow stick 
the shade that I had on, I don't remember what shade I had on that day, but it did not move. It did not move, it looked exactly the same. I should have taken pictures, but I looked so bad that I was like, no. Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic product and a really good price point. Clay de Poe eyeshadows. Guys, I mean, I know I sound like a broken record because I've been saying excellent things about a lot of these products, but the Clay de Poe's are just beautiful. Now, here's the here's the thing. There's a couple of drawbacks with the Clay de Poe's that I, that I want to mention specifically. Um, here's the uh, green one, um, and this is seagrass. I remember, yes, seagrass. First thing is, because of the nature of this product, the there's a case and a refill. So here's the case. And then the refill's here. Because the shade of the refill is on back of the refill, when you put it in the case and you look at the case, you have no idea what shade it is. So I have no idea that this is seagrass. And then this one is, I forget. <laughs> See, I don't even remember. I haven't filmed with it yet. I think it's number four, but I don't remember exactly. And I have to pull the refill out to know what shade it is. So that's something to keep in mind when you store them. Um, and even if you store it in the box that the case came in, that won't matter either because the case box, which is what it would fit in, it won't fit in the refill box, doesn't have a name on it either because it's the, it's the case. So you're going to have to put a label on it or you're going to have to label it in some way so that you know what it is when you store it. Something to keep in mind. It is $110 for the whole thing, the case and the refill. I would strongly suggest if that price point just, just seems astronomical, which I totally get, getting the refill. However, I will say this. The product itself, if you're somebody of a more mature age or if you're somebody who has problems having their eyeshadow last or you have texture on your, eyeshadow, on your eyelids or you feel like you always have problems with your eyeshadow looking you know, uh, vibrant and uh, pulled together. This is an amazing formula with really excellent quality and it stays all day and looks beautiful. I recently saw someone do uh, an influencer on, she's mostly TikTok, but uh, a review of Clay de Poe and basically she was like, I don't get it. I don't understand why this is so expensive. It's not worth your time. All I would say, and everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And absolutely, I, I think that's very important to, to note here and in real life. Everyone has a right to, to like or dislike something. Um, but I do want to bring, and I always try to do this with all my, my reviews and my comments, nuance to things, right? Jennifer, just speaking of me, when I was 25, yeah, it probably wouldn't have seemed like there was any point to that product to me because I was 25 and at 25, and I'm not saying everyone who's 25 has this, but I didn't have any skin problems. I really didn't. My skin was pretty much perfect. I didn't appreciate it at the time, uh, but I didn't have acne. I didn't have lines. I didn't have wrinkles. Uh, you know, everything looked good on my skin. I was very lucky. Uh, and now uh, I'm not 25 and I try to take very good care of myself. I try to take good care of my skin, but you know, I'm older. That's just the way it is. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that I am. Uh, I'm glad that I am older and I, you know, rejoice in the fact that things change and uh, that's, that's a good thing and that's something that we should all value. But that product, the Clay de Poe product and the uh, attention to detail and the attention to skincare and the attention to products that will work well on a different type of skin or a different type of uh, maturity, I think is, um, important because I think for a long time the beauty industry, in my opinion, only focused on youth and that only youth could be beautiful and if you were going to be beautiful it had to be youthful and I don't think that's true. I think all ages are beautiful, all types are beautiful and there needs to be products out there to not only address any concerns that you have depending on what you have um, but also to, to you know rejoice in them and bring joy out of it. So. I think the, the Clay de Pro uh, release is an excellent release. Do I wish it was cheaper? Of course I do. <laughs> of course I wish it was cheaper, but it's not. Um, and I value it for what it can do. So when I, you know, I'm going on long days and conferences and uh, I need something that I can really uh, count on to look great all day and last, that's definitely something I'm going to reach for. Prada. Prada is a very exciting launch because I think it's something that they put a lot of time and energy into the launch. It's very creative, has a lot to do with their fashion house. Uh, I did my video, you know, a lot of the, the eyeshadows uh, relate back to prints that Prada's done. Um, when I was younger, I loved the Prada nylon bags. It was very big for their time. I think Prada's having a little bit of resurgence, some of the things that they're doing 
uh, on the fashion side. I'm going to talk a little bit about some, uh, you know, fall collections and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely love the collections they came out with. I like the packaging. I like the products. I think the eyeshadows are excellent. Um, this one right here, which was, I think this is this is four or five. Now I've forgotten, but it's the green one. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I do want to say a couple things. I think the formula is really good and very, very lightweight. So it's going to work for pretty much anyone, um, but it's very pigmented. But this shade, uh, and here it's green and some it's blue, it's purple, uh, is a soft matte shade. And that shade is very pigmented, but it's also very soft in its like intensity over time. So it does fade a tad. Um, it doesn't have the same longevity as the other shades in the palette. So just something to be aware of. It, it's not like it faded away in a couple hours. It was still there, but it does lose some of its intensity. It's a softer, it's a softer um, take on the color, which actually I'm good with because I'm not much of somebody who would wear that like green like all over the eyes. I wear it more as a pop. So I'm okay that it's soft and it fades, but something to, to take you know note of. The Prada Foundation. I really like the Prada foundation, Prada foundation, and I'm surprised that I do because it's a soft matte. But what I would say is this, it is the best soft matte foundation I have ever used. And it's one that I will continue to use because I do like the way it looks. And it's an exact match, which is amazing to me because I picked it out of thin air, picked it online, and uh, I just got lucky. But it's perfect, literally matches my skin perfectly. So for that, I am just forever thankful. Um, but it does, I like it over time more. Uh, it is it does you know settle a little bit. It is a little dry at first for someone like me. I think if you have very dry skin, you might not like it. Um, I think if you have average, normal, whatever they call it, skin, and your skin is not dry, I think you're gonna really like it. I think if your skin is a little bit more oily, I think you're gonna really like it. Um, as the day goes on, it breaks down. A little bit of oil comes through. I like the way it looks more because I like more of that radiance. I like more of that dewy look on my skin. But overall, I really think it's an excellent foundation and shade matching. I just, I still don't know how they did that. Um, Victoria Beckham, I want to mention really quickly the contour and the eyeliners. The contour I've been wearing nonstop. This is the one in, oh my goodness, I forgot to say it, shade. It's not biscuit. It's something. I'll write it down below. Yeah. Forgot the shade already. But anyway, it's a really good marble. Haha. -ha. Uh, marble. It's a really good shade. And I think it works on a lot of different people. It's a great contour shade. It's cool. I've talked a bunch of times about contour shades. It shouldn't be warm. They should be cool. This one's excellent. I haven't tried any of the other shades. But I will say, I love the fact that it's like kind of a thin contour. It just makes it easy to do like your nose if you wanted to. Like just go a little in here and be like, okay, you know, all right, I'm just going to super quickly contour my nose and I don't have a mirror in front of me guys so this ends up looking weird uh, but it just you know it's a great product it lasts it doesn't look weird it doesn't like settle in the lines it doesn't break down throughout the day it just works isn't that what we all want it just works um, and it's a decent price point as well I wish she would come out with like collections instead of like one or two pieces here or there but I understand she's more of an independent brand so I get it her liners um, this is the uh, one of the uh, the, um, I forget what they were called. They were like the electric shades. This is the blueberry shade. I use this um, with, what one did I use this one with? Was it the Prada? I can't even remember, but these electric shades and these liners in general are fantastic. If you haven't picked up a Victoria Beckham uh, Kajal liner, pick one up. Find a shade you like and try it. I'm, I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. They're super soft. You can make them into eyeshadow. They're, they're easy to go on. Talking about more mature eyes. These work beautifully on a more mature eye because they just, they slide across the skin like silk. Beautiful. Uh, and last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about um, Chanel Bizance. Now, Chanel Fall, I will have by the time this video goes up, and I might even have a video of it. I have pieces of it already as I'm recording this, but I don't have the blushes yet because where I was buying them from, the blush is sold out, uh, but I will have them very soon, and they look interesting, and I'm going to reserve from saying anything else just yet, but the, the Byzance, or Byzance, because it's Byzantine uh, collection, I have two of the shades. I've done videos on them. I will pick up the Baroque one with the green in it, because I love green so much. I'm like, okay. Um, I really like the two that I have. I don't think they're as outstanding as the Clé de Pose or the Yves Saint Laurent or even the Prada. But I think the formula is really good 
And for those of us who are looking for a beautiful, elegant, soft look, I really think Chanel did a good job. I like the packaging. I like the gold hammered nature. I know it's plastic, but so is everything else. I mean, it's, most things are made out of plastic these days. Um, would I prefer there to have been like a little bit, a little bit more luxurious? Sure. Um, but the $70 price point I do like much better than the $88 pr price point that we got for the, um, for the, the tweed collection. I like the pops of like opalescent shift shades that are in there. I think they're really beautiful. The Cristal is my favorite um, of them, but I haven't picked up the Baroque yet, so we'll see. But yeah, I love this one. I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous look on my eye. Really was thrilled with the final look that came out. And actually, uh, when I wore it, everyone was like, what are you wearing? That's so pretty. So I have to say, I do like it. Um, you know, again, I've heard some feedback. People are like, it's soft, it's too soft. It may be, I'm very pale. Uh, I am gonna try it on my husband. Uh, he's been a little sick, so I haven't had a chance, but hopefully by the time this video goes up, I will have at least swatched it on him. Uh, also to mention the Prada, the lipstick, the soft matte lipstick was is really pretty. Ty Polo is the one that I got. Uh, that's the lightest shade. I do plan on picking up the Auburn shade in that because I, I really did enjoy that product. And I'm not a soft matte or matte, frankly, person at all. Um, but that one I enjoyed. So that was a really fast run through of everything. I think I included everything that I've tried over the last month or so. I might have missed something. It's entirely possible. Uh, as I might've mentioned, my brain might not be working quite right uh, right now. And uh, if I did miss something, call it out. That's okay. I'll, uh, I'll certainly answer your uh, comments, questions down below in the comment section if I can. I, I really have to say, there hasn't been anything where I've tried it and I just didn't like it at all. But I would say my like okays were probably the Dior that I've tried thus far. Um, that, that collection, you know, the, the bow mask, I didn't try the other one. I feel like a rosy shade. Um, and even the blushes, they're really good, but I just, I don't feel like it was like an outstanding thing compared to everything else. I was just kind of like, it's good. The Chantecai, again, nothing bad, just compared with everything else that's come out. I've just been like, it's okay. Um, the Prada foundation, I really like it, but I wouldn't say it's outstanding for me only because it is a soft matte and that's not my favorite finish. Um, but I think it is outstanding the way they came up with the shades and how, what a perfect match it is for me. And for being a soft matte, it works extremely well. So gotta say, um, you know, that, that did impress me. My two standouts, if I had to say like what I would really say is like, I will probably have like for the rest of my life kind of thing is the Dolce & Gabbana powder, which I just think is phenomenally good. I just, I'm so impressed by that powder. I cannot tell you how impressed I am. The E Saint Laurent uh, eyeshadows, just, just stupendous, like really. Love them all, love all the shades, love the fact that, you know, they can go from like day to night that kind of thing. Um, uh, and then the Rare Beauty eyeshadow stick, strangely enough, because they're just useful. Like they're just, I need to go out. I, ha I don't want to have to worry about it. I don't want to worry about smudging. I don't want to worry about creasing. I don't want to worry if I get stuck in the rain. I don't have to worry about it if it's still on 12 hours later. They work. They're just good. And they're not particularly expensive uh, when we're comparing all this other stuff. So, you know, I think more people can uh, buy them. I think they're more accessible than, say, the Clay de Peau, which are $110. Again, love the Clay de Peaux, and I think for a certain uh, segment of people who are buying makeup, it's going to be something that is really, it, it really is going to take a place in your in your makeup collection that nothing else will be able to compare to, but it is a pricier investment. So, you know, I want to, I always want to be cognizant of that when I'm making suggestions to people, because I know not everybody can can afford that price point. Absolutely. Um, but if you're looking for something that looks really nice on the eye and lasts all day, you don't have to worry about it. Those eye sticks from, from Rare Beauty are a really good choice. And you know, they're one and done, they're simple and they're easy, so. Okay, I'm sure I forgot something. <laughs> it's just how things are going these days. But thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. And I would love to hear like what your favorites have been, what you think of some of these. Do you hate any of these? Do you love them? Uh, and there's more to come and like I said, more fall and a holiday right around the corner. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.